morning guys. How you doing? Uncle Craig here. On a very cool morning because it's been raining all night. Rained all day yesterday too. But today I'm gonna I decided I'm gonna go try and fly my drone. <clears throat> I want to go out to uh, my wife has some her family land, I guess. Her sister has land in the village here. Big old out in the middle, of all the rice and everything. Great place to try and fly in the drone. So, and I haven't been flying the drone because right, I, I I only I, mean, I had a drone in California, different kind of drone. Um, and you know, I, was ha I, I knew how to fly and have fun with it. And when I got this drone, I was just starting to figure out, you know, how to use every finger, you know, on the controller. And, um, but of course, now that I have a finger I can't bend, which was normally, this would have been, this would have been the finger that you use, your trigger finger on my left hand was, is the one that can rotate the gimbal camera down and up and kind of sweep it up as you you know as the view comes and um, so that's going to be a little tricky trying to use this one because I, I can't even if I could bend it, it the nerves are cut so I can't feel that so and, and you know and that kind of gimbal action is sensitive so anyway I'm going to try that and uh, try and do some stuff to the footage will probably come out terrible, but yeah, I'm gonna go out there and try it. We're gonna try a new. There's a new little uh, restaurant along the way. What cafe? I guess road roadside stop in the village. I pass it every day when I go to Global, which is just about every day. Speaking of which, I have to go today. I need to buy the three-inch pipe. An elbow that'll come out of the toilet in the shop house renovation but yeah this rain comes it's just unbelievable the amount of growth that occurs in the um, in the garden I should just say in the in, in the weeds that are in the garden but meh. What are you gonna do? It's only like about 25 degrees today, centigrade. So whatever that is, <clears throat> six fifteen in the morning. Oh yeah, and I got uh, took delivery of my rat repellent spray for my car. So I can keep those keep those rats out of my. Hopefully that'll work. I got mothballs in there, but I don't know if I should put it on my tires so they don't climb up. Cause in order to get they don't fly, so they must be climbing up the tire or something. That's right. Well, the, the 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 metal's all slick. How'd they get on top of my dad on the where the mirror is? Maybe they climb on the roof of the carport and then jump down. Fuck, I don't know. Christ. Unless they've adapted and then the rats have gecko feet. That'd be crazy. Speaking of crazy, let's look at my crazy cats. What are they doing here? What are you guys doing? Checking stuff out in the morning. They're actually pretty nocturnal though, so they're all bouncing around all night. I'm surprised. Surprised they're up, but 
usually when I come down and sit out here, they'll they'll get up and go over here, see what's up, see what I'm doing. What am I doing? I don't know. I don't spend as much time as I should probably in the video editing. I just, I don't know, man. I have the energy times. I haven't gotten my soil yet for my planters, my cement rings there. I got ten right here and five other ones in a row over there. I just put them there kind of randomly. I figured these are far enough apart that if the if you know if it's a big bush or a tree or a plant, it won't run into the other one. And I made them into the two rows just because the rows of the normal garden were going that way. The five on the other end, I kind of did the same thing, but we're kind of in a row that will get some of the sunshade certain times so maybe the maybe some of the planters will have plants that <clears throat> you know welcome the shade more during the day and then some of them will and the others will welcome the sun more but everything I do here is pretty random so, like today figuring out that I'm gonna go out to the family land and and uh, make some videos with my drone. All right, man. Well, let's get to it. Bye, catch you. Okay, well, we stopped at our <clears throat> at this little place. Very small. Pretty cool. Can sign out front. It's right on this, this road that goes to Lotus. Then we turn left, right, and then right down to our house. So you can ride a bike here if you wanted to. And uh, it's a pretty cool little place. It's, it's only got like what, one, two, three tables. And uh, check out the menu. Here's the name of the restaurant. Satani Lap, like, you know, like Lap Station. You can see, check out those prices, dude. That's like, that. that's all like right now, that's like all less than a dollar. And look at that. Lots of some thumb. And for those of you who don't know, lap is like uh, easy raw meat with lots of hot pepper, but everything. You think you're on a budget, you want to eat, you can eat plenty in the kitchen. Very cool. And you know, he just threw this up on in front of his property, right? And on the property line, particle board, probably didn't cost much of nothing. Put a little cement wall around there. Made himself a nice little roadside kitchen, huh, Dot? <laughs> Put some plants in there, a little ambiance with some some uh, orchids. And then when he's closed or whatever, he'll just take this screen, burning screen, just roll it out, put it on the other side, and you got it. Water free. And it's a pretty good location. I just parked on the side of the road. And that road actually is the road to Global, if you didn't know already. So it's pretty pretty easy. There's actually a temple over there on the left. Very nice out today actually. So let's get uh, let's get back at you when my food's here. Well our lunch is served, or I should say snack. Our snack of tech. Check it out. Oh yeah, so that's gonna be lap pork. Right? I need more. Yeah. yeah. And this, oh yeah. A little bit of raw meat. You gotta love it. Served with vegetables, of course. And our favorite, my favorite, she has her own there. Which is Sticky rice, baby. 
And I'm gonna be I'm gonna be getting me a, a Leo with this, so you know. They just flip over to the to the store there and grab that quart of beer for me. <laughs> Alright guys. Yeah buddy. Leo. You can get down camp with their dog. And the uh, orange thing. And of course we, we drink our beer with ice here, you know. Just because that's that's kind of what you do. You know. Hey, a couple my top. Oh yeah, buddy. My Leo. And you know, it's just, it's just like soda. It's like, like water. Alright you guys, well let me eat my food. Uh, we'll get back at you on the road trip. Okay, well. Oh, that was full. I'm full. That was pretty good. And <clears throat> less than 200 baht. For those of you who are doing the math, it's like 35 something baht to a dollar right now. So basically, that was uh, for, a, for, a, for a large bottle of beer, a couple orders of lap with some vegetables, a couple orders of Sticky rice uh, and water. That was less than six dollars, I think. Amazing. And although some prices are on the rise in Thailand, stuff like this, no. You can eat every day like a king. And that's what we do. Like, well, we're on the road again. I'm uh, see if I can't have my. Casso camera take us to uh, some other kind of extended family land. All right, man, back at you.
So here we are on the family land. And oh my God. This is why I'm here. Check this out. I don't, I don't know if you can see what I see. You can't. It's probably no depth in there because I'm looking in the viewfinder and those mountains right there look kind of small. But here, in my eyes, they're, they're actually quite big. I can see the blue hue in the, in the trees and it's just, just ultimately nothing but rice and just gorgeous, gorgeous land. You could put a bed out here and see. I might have to come camping out here. That's how pretty cool this is. At least right now anyway because the weather is like perfect. <laughs> I'm sure it could be quite uncomfortable. We came out here before but... Um, but yeah, very cool, man. You got some mango trees growing on the side of the pathway up here. But um, in those other videos, I show you some of those big white birds. Might even saw it if that Acaso uh, camera I'm using for my dash cam picked it up. But they, oh, there's one right there now. Is that a bird? Uh, maybe a bird or a bag or something. I don't know. But anyway, the birds, so they, they primarily go after the snails. I know they do. It's the easy pickings for them. So they'll go in there and they'll grab the snails and then they put them out here on the ground, on the grass. You can see there's like snail shells all along here because the birds come out, pick them up, and then they tear them apart, right? They really just pierce them. This shell right here, and it's pretty big. This is a pretty big snail shell, man, wouldn't you say? We can eat these too, but check this out. This right here... This right here, this right here is the one that goes right here. This is where the snail tries to protect itself. This is called the the foot, right? It's called the foot of the snail. They don't eat that, but it is a pretty cool thing. You might see this being used for a different art or something like that. People use these things because they're quite hard, quite very, very, very hard. And these shells are very cool too. You could use these. You can use these. And, and the thing is, these birds... They pick these things clean. I mean, like, super clean. So much so that you could probably just wash it, and then you use it. You know, you got a restaurant, you put your stuff in there, serve a little lop in there or something. Pretty cool stuff, man. Yeah. What, the, the snails? Yeah, see, the birds are having a... The birds are having a field day. If I was a bird, man, I'd be coming to Thailand. <laughs> Eat them all. Just eat them up. Eat them up, eat them up, eat them up. Yeah. And if you look all the way over here, you can see, you might see this a lot of different places. Those little, um, the pink parts that are attached to all those trees are those eggs for this specific breed of snail. Actually, the other snails have those same kind of eggs too, but yeah. So you could actually go get those eggs and harvest them, put them in your own little, uh, you know, catchment, and make a start. You know, start growing those snails. I mean, people do that. They they have the build a little cement corral and and uh, <coughs> and grow these snails and eat them and sell them i have no problem eating them because uh, it's not a snail like a slug or anything it's a snail more like conch uh, i don't know if you've ever eaten conch and my i had eaten it long long, long time ago and then when i recently had a, a contract to work in the bahamas conch was like everywhere conch salad conch oh my god that stuff was so good I could not get enough of that. And it's really just basically a, a shell, you know, with a muscle in it, right? I mean, that's what the, the texture is. Once you, once you just pull it out of there, you can pull it out with these. Uh, what you could do, I mean, I don't know. The birds are better at it. You could probably train a bird to take it out for you. But if you knock this little end out... If you cut that little end out, the mantle is where it, it it's, the mantle is what holds it in there. So if you knock that out, it won't be able to hold it in there and you should be able to pull it out by the foot. But um, you just take it and, you know, dip it in hot water, like blanch it. 
You don't have to boil it or anything. Just, you know, a couple of times in hot water and it'll firm right up. And then you can just chop, 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 chop. I'll probably have to, you know, I'll make a video, you guys. Uh, I'll make a video of that. Hell, maybe I could even get some here today. Oh my gosh. I did bring my boots just in case it was muddy. But what I really want to do is I want to get my drone up, man. I want to get my drone up so I can fly over this pristine farmland into the mountain view and oh my god hope i don't lose my drone though but we don't have a lot of high wind so the drone doesn't i don't think it's going to freak out but um all right man let's get that drone up let's look at that footage all right all right and you know setting up for the drone is pretty easy i mean the dji mini 2 the controller you know it has these little the toggle handles screw right in take them off so that way you know they're not breaking off i mean i could just always have it <laughs> always have it in there but i don't want to draw i don't want to break them off so take them out screw it in pretty easy just go ahead and re use your thumb release the phone catch and then there's a little cable that you can pop out so i just push it up put the phone in there take the, whoop trap my cable Ugh. yeah put the cable you know in your normal phone and <clears throat> and then I just I have the you know if you're flying it with your phone you have the DJI app and I don't know you can see that because the my phone's broken already right boom DJI app is up and I'm gonna turn the, the controller on by a short press and then a long press so you hear a beep and then you do the same with your drone this is a DJI Mini 2 you go ahead I'm gonna pop the the uh, gimbal cover off you can fly it with the gimbal cover on but the picture's not gonna come if it's super super bright I would probably leave it on there open the wings open the aft and then again, short press and long press. Till you hear it go, and it's and it's lit. And so is the other one. Whoa! Let's go over here. Boom, boom, boom. Let's see if we can see this. Yeah. So I'm just gonna set this on the ground. I could do it right here in my hand, but right now I have it set to. Uh, I have it set to like watch for obstructions, so if something gets close, if I put my hand out or it'll it'll raise higher. I'm just gonna put it on the ground, <clears throat> and it's already probably can't see it. It's already the camera's already on. Please check it on the map. And just let me know that the GPS updated its location. So if I run out of battery or if it's uh, you know if I tell it to, I can say come home and it'll just come back from where it's at and it'll land right back here. I just touch on the arrow that says fly, go fly, whatever, and then you hold it. Now it'll fly up to about right here. Please check it on the <clears throat> you can make it go higher, but I, I, I keep it like at this height, you know, like, I'll show you, if I put my hand underneath it, it'll raise up because, you know, it doesn't want the obstruction. All right, well, let's get some video. Woo. I'm gonna try and make it go down this road right here. Yeah, it's over here. Hey, come on drone, this way. What I wanna do is, I'm gonna make it go down. I'm gonna try and, I'm gonna, tr I'm gonna try and, Go down low and then boom all the way up, you know. All right. Start a new recording for this.
Yeah, I'll try and make it uh, come at me. You know, I'll make it come at me, and then uh, like that. One of the things that's a little bit, you know, problematic is I need to get one of them, like a shield or something, so I can see the viewfinder better. Because the sun blocks it out, you know. Alright, come at me, bro. Get that my camera is heating up. So was my drone. I don't know if I got that last part of the record on. All right, let's check it out. I'm gonna get inside the truck, see if I got it recorded. Whoa. Whoa. Oh yeah, it's still recording. I couldn't even see the screen, you know, the the Sony ZV1 here. Also, um also, uh, heats up, you know, and then the display, you can't see it, so I'm looking at the display to try and make sure it's still recording and didn't, it didn't dive out with the battery or whatever. So the key, I think, is so when you're recording not only with the ZV-1, but also with the drone and that, is to make sure your phone battery has enough, make sure your drone has enough, so you can make these short runs. That's why I do short clips because at least I'll be able to capture those in case it drone. But one of the things I saw when when I was trying to do that big old 360, as I had the drone come back, when it approached, I could see that the camera was facing kind of almost like the other way. So I'll have to work on trying to see, I'll have to look at the video first, but I think what it's gonna show is kind of a very different approach to a 360. Like maybe it went there and then it kind of went all the way around and, or, you know, it took off like this with the camera, and then when it, and then when it turned around, instead of going like this in a 360, it might have went like all the way around and came back like that or something. So yeah, I'll have to check that out. All right, man. Well, next up, next video. Keep watching. Hope you enjoyed it. <laughs>